Hello, hello, hello. You are tuning into another episode of The Wonderkin Show. Today's topic <laughs> Mental Delusion. And look, this is something that we've been pretty much beating like a dead horse. But somehow the horse still has a heartbeat. So we're going to beat this horse six feet into the ground. And here's where I'm going with this. <clears throat> everybody, and I mean everybody, that has been wrong about the criticisms and the, the plateau that they've placed, you know, coming from the Ravens on, has walked back so much of what they have said simply because of what the Ravens have portrayed. Very strong-willed, big-mouthed, you know, rich people have said, you know what? It's looking like Lamar Jackson was in the right on this. It's looking like the Ravens just, they're fumbling the ball. And the reason why I call this episode, you know, mentally delusional is because you guys are going to see on, as you see, when you click on this, the thumbnail, they're acting like they're carrying themselves like they're Tywin Lannister. Anybody that has watched Game of Thrones, you know exactly where I'm going with this. They, 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 they wear that lion on their chest. Oh yeah, we're the Ravens. Oh yeah. A raven always pays his debt. Chest held out high. Right far. The first thing you see is their chest ego. They always feel like they're the smartest person in the room, even when they are wrong. But in all actuality, that's who they think that they're portraying as. <clears throat> that's not who they are. They're Cersei. They're Cersei Lannister. <laughs> Thinking they're smarter than what they really are. And because of that, they have placed the kingdom in jeopardy because they're willing to burn the sept. And the sept is who? The holy place? Huh? Lamar Jackson! That's who! That's who! I'm going to go even further, farther with this because <clears throat> Tywin, and, and if you watch the show, you know where I'm going with this. If y'all remember when Tyrion had did everything to win the war, it was on his back that the war was won. Tywin just came in and got all the adulation for it. Did y'all know that? Y'all remember that? It was Tywin and that and that godforsaken uh, Joffrey. Tell me if that doesn't sound like the Ravens. John Harbaugh and this front office has taken a lot of, you know, like, me, 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 us, 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 when it was on the backs of the Ray Lewis's, the Ed Reed's, the Lorinatas, the Terrell Suggs. Those are the reasons why we won. And, and Joe Flacco with that receiving core. Ray Rice. That's why we won. We won in spite, in spite of Harbaugh. And now we're in a place now where, Har where I truly believe Harbaugh's ego Bashadi's ego, EDC's ego, is now being challenged. And what have we seen with them? They don't like to be challenged at all. And Bashadi's a billionaire. Billionaires don't like to be challenged at all. Because why? They're billionaires. The rules that govern us, regular people, even millionaires, they do not govern billionaires. It's a whole different set of rules. It's a whole different lifestyle. It just is. You can hate it. You can you can say no, no, no. You, but it, this is fact. And because of that, the mere thought of saying, "How dare he think that he's going to get what he wants?" I do what I want when I want to do it. I'm telling y'all this right now. This is what's going down at the castle. It's funny we even call it the castle, right? <laughs> That's what's going on at the castle right now. I promise you, Bashadi's like, I'd rather sell the team 
Then admit that I was wrong and have to also guarantee a, a whole thing for him. I'm telling you. And that's a problem. That arrogant, pompous attitude, not being able to grow and evolve and learn, that is a big problem. You know, I like different things so we can always make comparisons. But you guys, if you, for anybody that's watched Game of Thrones, you understand why I'm comparing. Because it's a perfect comparison. And do you know what makes it even better? Let me tell you why. For anybody that watched Game of Thrones, when it comes to this Ravens, Baltimore Ravens team, do y'all remember that the Lannisters were coming up? What? Broke. For all the gaudy uh, outward appearances and Lannister always pays his debts and I'm Tywin and all that stuff, they were going broke. All the money that they thought that they had, they no longer had. That's the Ravens. All the equity that John Harbaugh thinks that he has garnered or garnished from this fan base is spent. The sellers of golds are empty. And now you have to go out there and try to figure out how you are going to rectify, rectify the boat that you have actively and willingly tried to sink. Those are bars. We're at such a, a, a weird place right now, right? Because think about this. We're on the cusp of making the playoffs. While we should have easily been in the playoffs we should have won our division easily i might add but whatever we're not gonna go here nor there whatever and we don't know as fans if lamar jackson is actually going to come back we don't know if he's saying look y'all haven't gave me what i need you haven't given given me what i want whatever i'll just sit this one out and i'll get 100 percent healed now do i think that lamar's doing that no as much as he's hearing all the chirping, as much as he's hearing all the talking, Lamar's a gamer. For better or for worse, he's a gamer. I truly do believe he's going to be like, look, I, I want to win. And if I have a chance to win, I'm going to try to win. And I think that the Ravens are, are hoping for that. Hoping that his competitive nature, his competitive fervor will get him back in the fight. Because we've already seen this Ravens team is nothing without him. You have taken away everything that made this team special and said, look, we're only going to put it on Lamar's shoulders. I Listen, <clears throat> the crazy thing is, Shannon Sharp, Skip Bayless, they were talking about it today. And I remember Shannon was going in on the Ravens, who he usually defends. And he says, look, let's call a spade a spade. Even if <clears throat> you want to say, I'm going to move off Lamar. Right? Lamar's already proven that he can go head to head against Joe Burrow. He's already proven he can go head to head against Deshaun Watson. They're both in your division. So if Lamar leaves, the best that this team's going to be doing is uh what's it called? Going against Pittsburgh to see who comes last. That's gonna be our competition. Who's gonna be last? Because Pittsburgh, even with all their wide receiving weapons, doesn't have the leader at the helm. And a leaderless helm is a dead ship. You like how I'm using all these references and puns and everything, right? <laughs> Next time, when I said the leaderless, I should have did Pirates of the Caribbean. It's just sickening to think. That we have everything as Raven fans that we have finally uh, we've wished to have, that we've been clamoring for, and it's about to be finished. All because of the reckless abandon and childish behavior of a front office that refuses to acknowledge the change that has happened in the NFL. And the change that is happening in the NFL is that players are no longer second fiddle. They are the foundation in which the NFL is built. People, listen, back in the, the 80s and recently, like I say about back in like 
I want to say the 2000s. For the NBA, I'm talking about NBA and NFL. In the 80s, it was the NFL. I mean, in the 80s, it was the NBA. But the NFL was on the 2000s. People follow teams no matter what. They wouldn't care if they took a milkman and put him out. They're going to cheer the milkman because they cheered the team. That's why back in the old days where the players tried to have the holdout, they were like, whatever, we'll put whatever. They'll, people will still come. They'll still cheer, and they did. The attendance didn't fall off, nothing. People were like, we're going to cheer whoever. Whoever has that jersey on is what we're cheering for. It's not, it's not as much like that no more. This league, as much as it would like to remain that way, is built and driven by stars. The Patrick Mahomes, the Lamar Jacksons, the Josh Allens, the Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's, the Joe Burrows. That's who drives the league. That's why the league has changed up so many to the rules to protect the QBs. Because the QBs are their money makers. There's no way the Ravens don't know this. There's no way. No way. But they act. They carry themselves. Like that doesn't affect them. That's what I mean when I say mentally delusional. Because this is being hit from so many different angles that you could pick an angle any which day to make a different point while still hitting the nail on the head. This team, this organization, they owe it to the hardworking fans. That's right, us. We're the ones that pay for those Mercedes. We're the ones that pay for those um, BMWs. We're the ones that pay for the Ferraris. We're the ones that pay for the Lamborghinis. We're the ones that pay for the Bentleys. Us. The people that buy the jerseys, the people that go to the game at negative 10, negative 5, the people that will do whatever it takes to watch the game on their phones, on their tablets, on their, on their, on their televisions, risk getting in trouble, do all these things. Go out, they'll, 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 they'll be out there cooking everything. That's who you owe. And just because you won a Super Bowl yesteryear does not mean that your debt is cleared. Your debt has not been paid. Because when I told this to somebody before, what you did to the Ravens, so you did this to yourself. You gave Raven fans hope. You opened their eyes to the possibility of having possibilities. Endless possibilities, I might add. That's what you did. Once you went up in the draft and you took Lamar Jackson with the way he plays, the fervor, the absolute reckless abandon that which he plays like, it's infectious. So what you did was you said, oh my God. Oh my God. Look at, look at it. We could, we could do amazing things. We could keep up with these other teams. As much as we love defense, as much as we love running the ball, this guy, get, man, he gives us hope. And to make it worse, he relates to a very strong portion in Baltimore. See, Baltimore looks at him not as a player also. They look at him like a brother, like somebody's younger brother. Somebody's older brother, somebody's son, somebody's uncle, somebody's nephew. That's the way that they've ingratiated themselves with Lamar Jackson. And you know what the three of you guys do? Matter of fact, four of you guys do. You sit there on your high horses looking down on the same fans that that pretty much except for one of you given the rest of you the money to have those horses because Bashadi was a billionaire before he came to Baltimore so whatever that's fair but all the rest of them on the backs of the fans the people at the end of the bar how dare you how dare you how dare you turn your nose up at us the fans you think us beneath you, fine. You, you think us not intelligent, okay. 
But the one thing you can never, ever say that we are, are is blind. Because nobody's blind. We all have vision. And we all can see the foolishness that's going on. And Skip Bayless even said today that an uh, offensive player was the one that's still in the building that gave him the information saying that Lamar is not the same anymore and he's carrying himself a little different. You guys have wasted, actively wasted a player's rookie contract and you expect to be forgiven for it. You didn't mess up one year. No. You didn't mess up two years. Nah. You didn't mess up three years. Nope. You didn't even mess up four years. You messed up five years of a player on an affordable deal. And you would think that us as fans should be understanding to your plight? <laughs> no! It will not happen. Either shape up or ship out. Because I tell you one for everything. I tell you one for everything. These people of Baltimore, they're going to bring the fire. No pun intended for the Game of Thrones fans. You don't want us to turn our backs on this organization. Shame. 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 And that was another episode of the Wonderkin Show. <laughs> you guys can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and you know I appreciate it. Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. I love talking with you guys in the comments, having banter back and forth, especially now during the holidays. <laughs> Have your Christmas spirit. <laughs> But look, this is this is the night. This is the Wonderkin Show with another episode, uh, another episode of the Wonderkin Show with your um with your boy Nitro signing off. And you guys know my slogan: Peace. And I'm out. Yeah.